Hey everyone, welcome back to another Snack Time video. Today I'm going to show you how to send encrypted messages to other people using an open source project called Private Bin. All right, if we hit up privatebin.info, you can see the developer's official page. Uh, this is data encryption and decryption using the browser. So the server has no knowledge of the information you're sending back and forth to other people. Uh, you can check out a, a demo of this product by clicking on the top left here where it says, try it out. We're gonna do that real quick. I wanna show you how this program works before showing you how to set it up and install it on your own server. So if you want to send a secret message, just type in, hey, secret message. And when you click create at the top right, it gives you a URL that they can click on. It, you have a lot more options than just what you're seeing here. Let's jump back and let's rewind a little bit. If we click on new again, I can also specify the expiration time for this message. I can make it so that it burns after reading, so they only can click on it once. After that, it's destroyed. I can also go as far to have a discussion, so I can have this be an open thread. So I can, maybe I want to make it for one month, and I want to password protect it. So you can add a password, make it have that extra layer of security. I'm going to use uh, the password of password. And I can also attach a file. Not only can I put in plain text, but I can also insert source code. I can insert and do markdown language. So maybe I wanted to send a super secret code to one of my friends and we wanted to have a little discussion, but we wanted to be very private and very secure. This is my super awesome coding abilities that you're seeing here. So let's go ahead and we have our password set, set to expire a month, open discussion. I'm gonna create this link. So now I can send this link to my friend. I can also take a picture of the QR code and I can send that to them. So they can go ahead and jump in there and, and see my message without actually having the URL sent to them in plain text. Uh, another thing I can do email, but say I am that other guy I'm receiving that message. This is what I'm gonna be presented with. So you'll see I'm gonna type in password. And now I got my code. Now I can have a discussion with this guy. So both of us will still be able to access this URL for what I said a month. And the good thing is when you're hosting this, that date range is completely customizable. I'll show you how to do that too. We go add comment. I can give myself a nickname if I want to. This code is amazing. And so now I can have a discussion, a kind of a back and forth. I can add comments, I can reply. So you can see where this would be really useful. And again, the server has no knowledge of what you've typed in here. Any files you've attached are all encrypted. So if the server were to become compromised, uh, they can't produce any sort of results or give anybody any information about what's on the server itself. Hopefully this is something that's really useful to you. I'm going to show you how to set this up and configure it on your own server. And I'm gonna show you a little bit of the configuration you can do to make it more customized to what, you know, the appearance that you want. So a couple of things that we're gonna need for this project. One, we're gonna need a Linux server running Docker. I'm also going to be using Portainer and Nginx Proxy Manager to handle any of the certificates and traffic routing. So let's go ahead and take care of the very first step, and that's creating a subdomain or domain for our private bin site. I'm gonna be making a subdomain under SendHow like I usually do for all these other projects. However, you can do a completely new domain and route it, same basic steps. I'm gonna click add new record, create a new A record. I'm going to call this private, and I'm going to route it to the same IP address as my external server. I'm gonna save all changes. And now I've created my subdomain. I can go ahead and proceed with my next step, which is creating the Docker container, and then finally setting up my Nginx proxy manager. So there's a couple of ways you can go about finding the specific instructions for private bin and Docker. Honestly, one of the most simplest ways is just Google it. I'm gonna type in private bin, 
Docker install. And I'm going to click on this first link here, the GitHub for private bin. So once we're at this GitHub page, we can scroll down and find our Docker command. We see it's right here. Docker run dash D restart always read only, which makes the file system and the image read only in Docker. Uh, opening a port, which we're not going to need that. We're going to be using Nginx. And lastly, our volume, which I'm going to tweak that a little bit as well, but that's after we had it set up. So what we'll do next is copy this command and then we'll SSH into our server since I will be running this and deploying this from the command line because that read only tag that you see here is not something I can reproduce with Portainer, at least what I've been able to find. So to SSH into our server, I'm going to open a command prompt and I'm just typing in SSH. I'm going to put my username and my server IP address. And now I'm going to paste my password and I'm signed in. So once I've SSH'd into my terminal window, I do want to copy and paste that command from the GitHub Docker installation page. So if I copy this and head back to my terminal, I'm gonna paste it, but I'm not going to run it quite yet. I'm going to remove that extra dollar sign. And since I'm not root, I'm going to add sudo I also want to remove this dash P8080 because I'm going to be forwarding all my traffic through the Nginx proxy manager. So I don't need this thing to be internet facing. I'm also going to remove this dash V and I'll show you why in just a little bit. I'm going to let Docker manage the creation of that particular folder. Now, one thing I do want to add that's missing is the name. I don't want it to be called just some random name that Docker comes up with. So I'm gonna do dash dash name equals private bin. And that should be about it. All right, once that's complete, let's head over to Portainer so that we can do some extra tweaking and improve the security of our new container. Let's head over to containers and make sure it's deployed okay. And it is, I see it here. Now what I do want to do is I want to add it and create a separate network for this container so that none of our other containers can talk to it and it can't talk to any of our other containers. So let's go to, so let's go to networks. Let's find a subnet that's not in use. It looks like 17's in use, 18's in use, and that's about it. Let's use 20. So I'm going to copy this subnet. I'm going to add a new network. I'm going to call this private bin. I'm going to paste my subnet, remove that extra space. I'm going to change this 18 to a 20. And now I'm going to create my network. So it's not going to conflict with any of my other networks. It's successfully created. I do have an extra step. If you want to be able to change the configuration of your new private bin site, you know, the name, the, the options that your users have, we need to create a, a separate volume for the configuration file that is outside of the container so that it's persistent. So no matter what happens to our container, our configuration file will be okay. This is a completely optional step. Feel free to skip over it if you just want to go with whatever the defaults are. Let's go to volumes. Let's add a new volume. And I'm going to call this private bin underscore config CFG. And I'm going to create this volume. Now let's hop over to our containers and make some changes to our private bin container. We click in here. We can scroll down and you'll see why I have let Docker decide where to put the information. And now I have a volume that I know where it's at for the server data rather than just in my home directory. I'm not a big fan of that. We will have to add and make some changes to this container and redeploy it. So let's scroll up. Let's click on duplicate and edit. Let's scroll down and click on volumes. I am going to add an additional volume. The path for that will be the path for my configuration file. That's going to be slash SRV slash CFG. And now I'm going to select my volume. 
and that's going to be my private bin underscore config volume. Now I want to change the network that it joins when it first starts up. Right now it's the default of bridge. I'm going to change that and make it private bin. That should be all the changes that we need to make. Let's deploy this and hit replace. All right, once this is done, let's go and find our configuration file. So we click into private bin. We can scroll down. See our volume is created and it's referencing our private bin config that we just made. Let's click into that and this will give us our mount path, which is the path that we need to go into under our terminal window and look for that configuration file. And if it's not there, create it. All right, the easiest way to do this is going to be switch user into root so that we can go straight into that path. Let's go to sudo and then su, and it will probably ask you for your password. Now let's go into this path. Let's go to cd slash var slash lib docker docker slash volumes slash private bin underscore config and then one more under the underscore data and we'll go there and let's see if there's anything in there okay so there's not anything in there which means we're going to have to create this configuration file ourselves again completely optional step i'm going to show you where to find that configuration file and put it into your server if we head back to our private bin info site, let's go to our GitHub page at the top right. And under the config folder right here, we'll find a config sample. Let's click into that. And let's also click the raw link at the top right here. And let's copy this URL. This will allow us to use wget to pull that file into our server. So I'm going to use wget space, and then I'm going to paste the URL that we just copied. All right, looks like it's downloaded it. It's called config dot, it's called conf dot sample dot PHP. Although we will need to rename that. So what we're going to do is we're going to rename it to what it actually is supposed to be. I'm going to do MV conf move dot sample dot php and the file that i want to move it into is conf dot php and now we can use nano or whatever text editor we prefer to make the changes all right so we can name so we can change the name of our site i'm going to change that to snow private bin and if we scroll down one of the options that i love specifically is the ability to change the amount of time that somebody can have this uh, secret out there you may not want to do uh, never as an option you may, may want it to eventually expire so let's add a semicolon there so never is not an option and let's go another step and let's add one minute so I'm going to do one min equals 60 seconds. There's a bunch of other options you can change in this configuration file. Definitely take a look through the entire thing. It's all customizable. I'm going to do a control X, hit Y, and then save that. And let's reboot our private bin docker container just to make sure that the changes are going to be picked up and now it's time to configure our nginx proxy manager so that it will route traffic to our new site once we've signed into nginx proxy manager let's go to proxy hosts let's add a new host do you remember the subdomain we chose i think i do private.sinhow.com and we want to forward all the traffic uh, to our Docker container. Let's head over to Portainer. Let's go to containers and let's copy this name here. Let's paste it into this field or move any extra spaces. 
And remember that port that they wanted to forward traffic to? It wasn't 80. 80, 80 is what it was. You can find that back at the Docker GitHub if you forgot. I'm going to block common exploits. I'm going to enable WebSocket support, and I'm hit save. Now, I do want to encrypt the traffic going to our new website. Don't want anybody to drop in and intercept what we're sending. I'm going to edit this. I'm going to go to SSL. I'm going to request a new SSL. I'm going to force it. And I'm also going to agree to the terms of service. All right, very cool, very cool indeed. I think we're now almost ready to head off to our new website. One step that we do need to complete is make sure that our Nginx proxy manager is on the same network as our private bet. So let's head over to Portainer. Let's go to our Nginx app, scroll to the bottom, and let's select a network to join. It's our private bin network, and let's join that network. All right, we are all joined up. Let's hop over to Nginx Proxy Manager and let's just give this little link a click. So now that we can see our private bin site is fully functional, we can check to make sure our changes are actually being pulled from our configuration file, which according to our name down here, it is. We can also see that our options for the length of this message have been customized. So no longer do you have never as an option. We do have now one minute. So that wraps up our video on private bin and how to configure and set that up on your own server. I hope you found this video beneficial. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.